Here is an agent on his way to Davy's locker. But don't worry about him, he'll be back. For in this case, Davy's locker is another name for a submersible raft designed as a special hidden storage locker and radio station for the agent in hostile territory. It can be brought in from a submarine or other mother craft and anchored in either salt or fresh water. It's kept submerged while you make your initial reconnaissance and at all times while not in use. Whenever you need anything, you bring the raft to the surface by filling the flotation chambers with compressed air or gas, which forces out the water, holding it down. After the raft reaches the surface, let air flow through the lines until it bubbles out from the bottom of all four flotation chambers. The raft then has maximum buoyancy, and you close the high pressure valve to shut off the air. Open the cans by rotating the handles. Equipment is held in place inside by racks. Lift out the rack containing transmitter, receiver, and power supply. Use the rack as a stand inside the can for setting up the radio. Set up the gasoline-driven generator in the same way and connect with the batteries in the bottom of the compartments. If a radio set is not necessary to the mission, any other equipment that will fit into approximately seven and a half cubic feet of space can be stored in the compartments as long as the total load of both does not exceed 400 pounds and upset buoyancy. Plugs and sockets are used for making all connections between units of the complete radio set. Several types of antennas may be used with this installation from an insulated wire on the water for short ranges to a balloon antenna for long ranges. There is a wet storage compartment on each side of the raft between the flotation chambers. They provide a combined storage space of approximately seven cubic feet for supplies which are themselves waterproof, such as canned goods, underwater explosives, and so forth. Heaviest loads can be carried when the load density is approximately that of water. To submerge the raft, open the four exhaust valves, one near the nose of each flotation chamber. Although oscillations may occur, the raft cannot capsize because the deck cannot tip more than 45 degrees under the worst possible conditions. The exhaust valves are placed so that the raft stabilizes itself while submerging, and you can easily control it at all times. The raft can be submerged to 60 feet where the agents are equipped with such underwater swimming gear as the Lambertson unit. Tests to this depth have shown that the dry storage compartments will withstand leakage and crushing. But if the raft were being transported attached to the outside of a submarine, the compartments would have to be left open and empty during transit to withstand pressure which might be encountered at the operational depth of the mother craft. When air pressure is used, 
the raft may be surfaced 10 times from 10 feet or six times from 30 feet if the storage cylinders are pumped to an initial pressure of 2,200 pounds per square inch. If CO2 is used, the capacity is 20 blows from 10 feet or 12 blows from 30 feet. You have a choice of methods for propelling a raft from its mother craft to the point of operation. A transom provides for the use of either an electric or gasoline outboard motor. A mast and sail come with it, which can be lashed to the deck when not in use. Or you can paddle it. The raft, however, was not intended to be used as a boat. This submersible raft can be completely assembled by two men using only four wrenches in an hour and a half. If you launch it from a submarine, you can put the pontoons and supporting frame together in about 20 minutes. When the rest of the equipment is placed on the frame, the submarine can leave and the assembly finished while the raft floats in the water. Davy's locker is 11 feet 2 inches long, 7 feet 6 inches wide, and 4 feet 6 inches high. Its weight empty is 900 pounds, with a maximum load capacity of 400 pounds, not including a two-man crew. All the components of Davy's Locker are either standard items or ones that can readily be fabricated from standard parts which should be obtainable in U.S. Navy yards throughout the world. This is a proven method for getting the agent's supplies and communications equipment ashore and for concealing their storage at all times until the agent is ready to use them.